Welcome to, or welcome back to, Total Spot Fest. JJ Brownlee, Jamie Faulkner, coming back at you here. Uh, <laughs> are you are you mimicking my speech as no, we go along here? Of never, course not. Why never. would you? Why would you? Because you always say the same damn thing every single time. Let me guess. We have an <clears throat> action-packed show. I was not going to say that at all. Uh-huh. I had something very, uh-huh. I had something very witty and original. Hey, this is... You gotta have consistency, and and you know this is you know. Have you ever taken a journalism class? Come on, man, this is how you you gotta come in with the. I'm committed to the bit. I've been living the lion tamer life for damn near two decades. Like you know, you know, we're gonna we're gonna talk about lion tamers tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That's for sure. So, (laughs) um, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us this evening, this afternoon, today. Uh, We do have a great show planned for you guys here. Um, you know, AEW's gearing up for full gear. We had <clears throat> the WWE's Blood Money, I mean, uh, Crown Jewel event. Uh, <laughs> I, same joke I make every year, but it's still on point, 100%. Not wrong. Uh, Not wrong. And some, some local news, uh, both uh, here in Kansas City and uh, amongst the Midwest. So, Jamie, how the hell you been, man? I'm all right. I've been fighting some kind of nasty cold for about a week. It's been awesome. <laughs> it's not COVID. Just want to make sure everybody hears that. I did not get the Rona. Um, other than that, uh, God of War came out yesterday, so I've already been heavily into that. So mm-hmm. happy God of War to all of our gamer friends. God of War is amazing so far. Happy Rain and Rock Day. Yeah, I, was, I, I told you I before uh, before Dynamite last night, I... You know, in the background, I logged in Twitch just to kind of see a little bit. I don't have a PS5, so, you know, I can't play it. Um, sorry, I'm an Xbox guy. And, you know, sometimes, you know, that, you, you win some, you lose some. But um, regardless, so I'm just watching. Just losing. It, whatever, you know. Um, so I'm just watching, it, you know, watching some gameplay online, you know, going on there. And it's funny. So on the left-hand side on Twitch, you know, you have your recommended channels or feels like you also watch this. And you see it has their name and what game they're playing at the time, right? And everybody, mm-hmm. God of War, 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 God of War. I'm pretty much sure, like... The entire like online gaming community was just like God of War yesterday for sure. So happy Ragnarok days, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Jamie Makes will sense. probably beat it this weekend, and <laughs> I, I probably won't. Um, I'm gonna try to cherish it, take my time. I decided I am gonna try to go through everything first, and not just try to do the the story. Like I usually go through the story first. You do story that you do, that you do complete. Yeah, yeah, like usually I play God of War four times, but I decided I'm gonna try to like find everything every single time. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to the Valkyries this this round. I haven't seen them yet. Don't know anything about them yet because I'm not that far yet. But I know they exist in here. It's the only <laughs> thing I know. Cannot wait. Good for you. Well, we got uh, plenty of wrestling to get to and talk about. So, Tons. Uh, some somewhat big news occurred this past week. So. Uh, we had talked before about our favorite local promotion and the unfortunate news of Journey Pro that they're going to be closing up shop here. You know, you know, every, everything that has a beginning has an ending, and so so it is with them as well. But they did say there's going to be one more show, kind of a send off bit. Well, they announced the date of that this past week online. So uh, December 29th, it is a Thursday, right before New Year's, will be the final show at Agnes. Uh, they haven't posted. So they haven't posted anything about the, the the show other than just the date itself. But they have been posting some um, effigies of sorts, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One for Jeremy Wyatt and one for Kenny Alfonso thus far, mm-hmm. and then just a thing about Journey Pro as a whole. Like it's just pluck at my heartstrings. Like, dude, don't, don't, I know. don't, don't. I mean, Chris, I love you to death, but he keeps like putting in like other like graphics and images of with like inspirational like goodbye quotes and you know you know you know you know rage rage against the dying of the light and it's just like come on man it's like (laughs) it's like don't don't keep doing it but it's it's still gonna be a great time no no information about official you know um card time um it's gonna be at agnes we know that you know but um tickets aren't on sale yet none of that none of that jazz yet Jamie and I will be there front and center. One mm-hmm. final go. It's going to be a great time. 
definitely recommend if any, nobody has plans. I mean, that's post Christmas before New Year's. It's a great slot, so you shouldn't have any excuse not to be yep. at Agnes. And let's have I'm off time. that week. I, I I'm game to do whatever. Let's let's have a good time. So that is the the good, the good, sad, but good news. But then there's also other good news locally. We talked last week about going to St. Louis for Glory Pro. Uh, we're talking about going back to Glory Pro next month, too. We don't know yet, but uh, yeah, I'm leaning towards it. You know, that Sunday matinee is perfect. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It Just is. Um, perfect. Better than what GCW is going to run on like the two weeks prior. Whew, that's well, that's rough for us. For us, you know, for those in St. Louis, is fantastic. So, GCW's uh, return to St. Louis area is coming on December third, and uh, it's eight p.m. bell time uh, over there on the Illinois side. Which, once again, if you live in St. Louis, great, right? You know, it's just, whatever. It's another night out, you know, but. I don't know if we can swing it because either we get home at like four or five in the morning or we get a hotel and both of those I'm not excited about. <laughs> yeah, neither, neither. So the great news is that GCW has that streaming package thing. So that might, I don't know, but they, they got, they, they've announced names uh, for it. They've announced a couple matches. So Nick Gage taking on uh, Cole Radrick. Uh, he's defending the uh, the the GCW title against Cole Radrick, and then they've got a uh, three way tag match. Second Gear Crew going up against I can't remember who the third team is because they were overshadowed by the names of Two Cold Scorpio and the Sandman teaming up. <laughs> that is I've never seen a Sandman live. Like Same. that would be reason I would go. Didn't even know Just he was to see the. Still wrestling. Damn sad, man. <laughs> as long as he comes out of Metallica, I'm I'm cool. Comes through, yeah, through the crowd, slamming beer cans on his head. Fantastic. With, with, say, with the kendo stick. I had, once again, I had no idea he was even still wrestling. So <laughs> I uh, I it, thought he retired a long time ago, I, but here we are. Yeah, for sure. And they have some other names who are gonna be there, of course. You know, you got Nick Nick Age is gonna Nick Wayne's gonna be there, Sawyer Wreck, both of those people we want to see live, and they're gonna uh, so mm-hmm. it makes it tough, you know, to, but we're not saying no to going to G C W yet. We're just saying it's highly unlikely given that Yeah, that's asking a lot. <laughs> It is. Plus, that is like that's the beginning of December too. So it's December third. Man, I don't know. We'll see about it. You know, um, nothing else. We got uh, the eighteenth is the next Glory Pro show. Correct. So, correct, Mundo. Should be some good stuff. Um, you've been you've been you've been keeping up on WoW. I sure should have. Oh, I have too. Well. The, the one thing, the main event, too. This is awesome, too. Main <laughs> event was a friend of the show, Raina Del Rey. Um, might also be known as Ruby Rays. Going awesome. against a very good friend of the show. She came in like a wrecking ball. Heidi Howitzer, wrecking ball, and wow. And that match was hard hitting. <laughs> And it, it uh, spoiler, it ended in no contest, but my God, it was, it was a fun one to watch. If you're not watching WoW, ladies and gentlemen, you, again, get yeah. on to WoW. Get on it, people. Come on. Good wrestling. Like, solid wrestling. The fans were into it. Like, it's just great to see Heidi get her flowers because she is so damn good and she's so funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it. It was really good, and Reina's, you know, I've got to watch a couple of, of Ruby Ray's matches now through them and through some other ones that she has. She's really damn good. Like, those two are a match made in heaven for styles. Like, Absolutely. I, I can't wait to see what happens next week with those two. Well, while Twitter's already teasing, you know, a rematch going on here, and we have yes. a little bit of inside information we're not going to share. Uh, but, I mean... It was short, and it's, it's and if if you if you can't if you if you, 
if you can't catch WoW, whatever, well, does Jamie's told you, go check out their YouTube. They put this match on there separately on YouTube, and it's not that long of a match, you know, because they, is it? It was, it was just a slobber knocker. Of we're just going to be the living shit out of each other, and then go through the crowd, and it ends. The show ends with them signing off after they rang the bell. I just see Heidi or a wrecking ball do a DDT or do, or do a stunner on Reina in the middle of the crowd over by like the. It was fantastic stuff. It was so. beautiful. It was beautiful. A lot of other great women though on that on on the show. I mean, I'm really interested. I really. You know, there's some of some women that I've really wanted to see that, mm-hmm. like for example, Ray Lynn, and I don't remember what her wow name is. All, Rachel. all these, Rachel. Okay, thank you. Yes, I, I always get I always get this all mixed up because everybody has a different name on wow than they do currently on the indies, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is so it's, it's confusing. A little it's bit. the name for there, just like <laughs> WWE does it. You know, I get it and I understand that, but it also makes it confusing because they're still wrestling under their other name, though. Is is the thing? Yeah, so yeah, it's like, <clears throat> but uh, Rachel or Ray Lynn, I've been wanting to see for a while. You know, but she's based out of Pittsburgh and she does the whole Northeast circuit, right? You know, so she doesn't really get farther west of Chicago. So, you know, seeing her and other these other people as well as, you know, as said friends of the show, it's great stuff. It is good stuff. Excellent stuff. Amazing stuff. Kick ass stuff. Watch it. <laughs> All the stuff. Like making fun of my stuff now. I don't know what's up. I, I mean, you know. I gotta do what I gotta do. I hear you. I hear you. I hey, I need I need all the pick me ups. I need all the pick me ups I get. When when the highlight of my non wrestling like sporting watching is Mizzou basketball, you know it's a rough year for JJ. Uh- <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Who's bowl? Who's bowl eligible, baby? Who hey. is bowl eligible? Well, LSU is bowl eligible. Uh, Georgia, Tennessee, yes, Kansas yeah. is bowl eligible. Congratulations. First time since 2008, man. I knew that. I knew they were going to get bowl eligible. I told you they got a couple more wins in them. They're not going to win the. They're not going to win the Big 12. Let's not, you know, let's not go crazy. They could. They have a legit shot of potentially running it out and getting to the Big 12 championship, though, uh, which would be insane. If they do, they if they do, they've earned it. I'll give them that because I do not think they're better than Texas, Kansas State. Depending on which Kansas State team shows up, they might either. I don't think that game's going to be close. It's either going to be a runaway one way or the other because Kansas State is all or nothing. Um, but, yeah, I did not expect you guys to, like, clean the clocks of Oklahoma State. So, I mean, maybe. Especially after getting our taints handed to us by Oklahoma. Yeah, we got three in a row. We got, you know, yeah. So, anyway, we'll see what happens. Hey, Mizzou, yeah. Mizzou's actually – here's the thing about, you know, look at this. You know, it's like I'm actually – I'm actually pleasantly optimistic about Mizzou football because in program building, there's four big steps. And we'll get back to wrestling here. I'm sorry. We, we, we're, taking, we're taking a shoot. We'll get back to wrestling in a second. There's four big steps. You lose big. You lose close. You win close. Then you win big if you successfully do the whole thing. That's what Georgia went through. Tennessee's going through it now. You know, LSU, when they had their big turnaround under Nick Saban, that's how they got up. I mean, that's that's the way it goes, right? You know, if it's not just a matter of a good recruiting class or good years or whatever, generally speaking, over a long haul, that's the way you do. And they're losing everything close. They're competitive. I think that they're just an offensive coordinator away from being an actual competitive program. So, I mean, college football is good. I'd much rather watch college football than NFL football right now. That's for damn sure. Let me just say yeah, that. Me. Not me. <laughs> you yeah, are. And my Irish, and my Irish beat Clemson. Like, Irish, what is going on? Irish beat Clemson. I mean, I don't even have, but I don't even have the fallback of hockey because my hockey team looks worse than the Steelers. It's, it's like, I have no idea what's going on there. Yeah, what happened there? Hey. I don't know. <laughs> they, I mean, they lost David Perron, but they have most all the same people, right? And mm-hmm. all the same coaches. Maybe they're down a little bit, sure, right? <laughs> but they're just, uh, you know, defense is vaporware, and I have no idea. It's like, it, anyway, it's depressing. But what's not depressing is independent wrestling. That's for sure. 
<laughs> Damn Skippy. And I'm glad we stopped in St. Louis, sir. Because for this week's independent wrestler spotlight, as we do every week, ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. this person is based out of St. Louis. We've seen them in St. Louis. We've seen them in Kansas City. We've seen them in Chicago. We've seen them in Des Moines. This person has wrestled the likes of Dan the Dad multiple times. Wrestled Warhorse multiple times. Mm. Wrestled Nick Wayne. He is your favorite cousin. He happens to live in the same neighborhood <laughs> as Dan the Dad. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about none other than the Cody Lane. Cody <laughs> yeah, I never got the whole hand thing, but you know, it's a thing. Well, I finally figured out what it meant, but I still don't get it. I kind of get it. What does it mean? It's a it's a peacock. Or is it's a flamingo? What, okay. A flamingo. Because he's the white trash guy, so he's got flamingos on his trailer park's lawn. And so the flamingo <laughs> is like his thing, right? Ah, uh, that makes a lot of sense now. So yeah, I do get it. So I so I yeah, you you get it. Right, but Coyle is great, man. We talked about him last week. That, which I don't know if you can watch the replay on Fight TV or if Glory Pro has a you know highlight, whatever. But if you could find that match between Dan and Cody from last month, uh, from the the most recent Glory Pro show, go do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good call, man. Yeah, it's it. That was a great match. There were thumbtacks. I wish since it was Dan the Dad, there was Legos. Personally, make it make it. I felt like that have been more to the bit. Kind of like how we saw him do the Man Scout match, where it was all like you know, like Boy Scout themed. We'd have this be more you know, Dad themed, yeah, suburban themed, you know, yeah, Air Monarchs on a pole match, you know. (laughs) Everybody knows what I (laughs) what that is. I hope they do. But anyway. You all can follow Cody Lane on the Twitters and I believe on the Instagrams as well at very Cody Lane. Very good, very good one. Yeah, we seen him quite a bit actually. He's been Journey Pro alum uh, quite a bit. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we've seen him up in up in Iowa. You know, definitely, definitely very talented guy. Great character. Um, yeah, good links for everything down below as always. If you're watching us. Links down below. Um, cool beans. Well, we wanted to shake things up a little bit because Jamie and I really enjoyed our, especially Jamie, but you know, I really I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would our whole spooky season uh, movie review thing. So mm-hmm. uh, kind of keep it on brand here. We're thinking about you know doing some more of this stuff. So I heard that you want to do something in honor of. The, the greatest month to be born in November, because it is uh, Thanksgiving month. It's autumnal time. The weather's well, changing. You want to do something. May, May is the greatest month to be born in, but uh, I digress. Uh, agree, disagree. Uh. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so no, ladies and gentlemen, we are not going to talk about Hallmark movies. I, I want to make sure that's out there. <laughs> They've already started their, their countdown of Christmas. And we all forget about the, the, it is the forgotten holiday of Thanksgiving. So for the month of November, I think we should start giving thanks to wrestlers, to things that got us into wrestling, to anything of the wrestling genre that you want to call out and say thank you for that. That's fantastic. So I, I I love that idea. Um, I am actually I'm born around Thanksgiving. For those of you who can't follow here, um, so I I have an kinship to Thanksgiving because every five years it's on my birthday. <laughs> so I always you know people are like let's get to Christmas. I'm like come on Thanksgiving. That's a, you know. So I think that's a great thing because we wax poetically about some of the stuff from our youths as well as from our adolescence. You know that we were into. So let's do it. Hey, this is. This was your idea. You lead us off, man. What's the first thing you're thankful for wrestling-wise? Okay. 
So the first thing I'm thankful for. Shawn Michaels, let's have... move on. Okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, well, you say that. Um, it happened 25 years ago yesterday. Oh, interesting. Okay. And this is the first time that I felt like, oh shit, wrestling's real. Like it, like got me. And that's the Montreal screw job. Oh, I want to give thanks to that moment because from that birthed degeneration X into superstardom. You know, it really kicked off the Monday Wars with Brett leaving. Like, there's a lot of things that happened with that moment right there. For me as a wrestling fan, if we didn't have that moment, I don't think I'd be into wrestling as much as I am because everything that the dominoes that fell after that. So, happy 25 year anniversary. And thank you, Vince, Vincent Kenny, for screwing (laughs) over Bret Hart. Yes. It hurts you to say those words. Wow. It really does. I mean, honest to God, though, that that moment propelled WWE back into the game because Mm -hmm. they were getting buried. I mean, WCW was on was just was on a path. They were just the they became the juggernaut, you know. Mm -hmm. But like you said, that propelled DX to that stratosphere level, which made the wars what they were great 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 moment so it does involve Shawn michaels okay i'm not surprised it did <laughs> which is okay hey hey Shawn michaels is fantastic you know um i'll try to think of i was gonna go in some different directions here i thought of a couple different things here and of course we've got several weeks we're gonna be doing this we're gonna do this for the rest of november yeah. um but i was trying to think of you know a little bit outside the box for it. So you had, you had made mention about stuff that got us into wrestling. Okay. So I want to say I'm thankful for Hollywood video and rental. Ooh. Solid. Because when I was a child, Blockbuster was kind of around where I was at, but Hollywood was the bigger one in central Illinois for whatever reason. You know, that was our video store, right? Uh, for those of you listening, uh, used to you'd have to go to a physical location, pay a little bit of money where you could borrow a movie, and then you bring it back later on. That's how we used to do things. Okay, you know, just just mm-hmm. <laughs> all you youngins out there, right? Um, but I started to get in, getting into wrestling. There was no internet back then. You didn't have YouTube or libraries, and wrestling was on a couple times a week, right? Um, I think when we were when we were re- when we were like it, it was, it was, it was. Ninety two was the first uh, Monday Night Raw. Yep. Before okay. they had a Monday show, but it wasn't called Raw. Right. They had a Monday show. It was, it was a tape show. It was kind of one of those studio things. You had a uh, Saturday Night Main <laughs> Event, right? Mm-hmm. You had a Saturday. I, I, I was able to see. Uh, I don't know if you saw it here in Kansas City, but in Central Illinois, we got to see like a Mid South showcase sort of thing. So we got to see uh, similar to what the Monday show was for WWE, but it was for NWA in the Mid South and, and Jim Crockett Promotions uh, on Saturday, like that late after that early afternoon. You know the post cartoon like right after saved by the bell right you know they yeah. had that um but that's pretty much it you know and then pay-per-views we were too poor for pay-per-views but we could go i could go i could go to you know hollywood rental and dollar 99 rent wrestlemanias and all these different things and you know, I remember like whenever my mom would go there because, you know, back in the day, that's how we used to do things. You'd go, they go once a week, you know, switch out some, get the new videos in, you know, family movie night, all that shit. And she always pick up a, a wrestling tape or two for me. And it always was, you know, went through the whole segment, first WrestleMania up through, I think at the time it was up to like eight or so, you know, give or take. Uh, whatever the Sergeant Slaughter one was, eight, nine, something like that. Um, oh, when he was the Iraqi, the, the Iraqi, Iraqi Slaughter? Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, <laughs> something we definitely don't want to talk about too much. But <laughs> um, you know, the, the Desert Storm, uh, Hogan, and everything. But you know, and then Yokozuna afterwards. But no, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, 
Royal Rumble. That's where I fell in love with the Royal Rumble, too, because I always get a Royal Rumble tape, right? Something else and a Royal Rumble. My mom's like, you've seen this before. I was like, I got to see the 92 Rumble again. I don't care. It was that good, right? Yeah. Video rental stores, man, for pre-internet, that's how we. That's how you got. That's how, that's, a, that's how I really went from just watching wrestling on the casual flyby to being a young wrestling fanatic. That's solid. That's a solid one. And ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to give thanks to something about wrestling, put it in the comments below. Tweet at us at Total Spot Fest. Let's do it. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Helps us out a lot. And don't forget to hit that notification bell for anything new because we do drop interviews from time to time. Mm -hmm. And, and may, maybe we'll start, you know, just throwing them out of nowhere, like randomly, like one one afternoon at four p.m. interview. Bam. Who knows? Never. You will. You will if you have a notification bell on. It's true. <laughs> We have, we have to shill. That's YouTube, guys. That's how it works. So, cool beans, man. I like this. This is a good. This is a good exercise, Jamie. Thank you, man. I I thought it'd be a little different. Yeah. Make sure we all don't forget about the forgotten holiday of when we celebrate when we t started taking over the land of the indigenous people of the. Of, of <laughs> I love Thanksgiving. I don't know. I, <laughs> I I I just generally love it. I'm mean, I'm a big guy anyway, so I enjoy the food. But I don't. I just love Thanksgiving, man. It's fantastic so uh, well let's give some thanks uh to uh something else so last night was AEW dynamite uh they are gearing up for full gear that sounds weird they are they are making the push uh for full Ramping gear full up. Ra thank you words um we're about we're what two weeks out give or take yeah um 10 days 10 Nine days, days. 10 days because it's on days. the 18th is uh full 19th 19th potato potato because this comes out on the 10th all right saturday the 19th yes all right so i'm sorry aw let's talk about aw a little bit it was a pretty decent show um yeah the first match holy shit <laughs> we just talk about that for uh, like i know we got to talk about the promos because the promos were fire for both both mm -hmm. mjf and moxley promos there's a lot like, set up there's some good stuff fire. going on um but that opening match with the acclaimed at ftr going against the guns and swerve and strickland oh my god there was there was not a there was nowhere i could point to there being a down person moment spot anything really in this and includes i mean let me ask you first of all the guns new name i like the new attitude sort of thing what do you what do you thought about the revamped ass boys i like them i, I kind of do too I, do like they remind you of the new age outlaws slightly uh, not slightly at all. Okay. Like 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was getting New Age Outlaw vibes hardcore from them. Well, I mean, and, 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 uh, the, the younger one, you know, I don't know if that's Rod or Todd ass, but the younger one, um, no, the shorter one, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. He actually did, uh, the road dog, you know, Jimmy J. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then they, they stole the big rig from FTR. They did on the acclaimed. I'm like, holy shit, what is going on? Like, Dude, it was so good. Like, you had a suplex by Dax Harwood of one of the ass boys onto the big old pile. Like, it was just insane in the membrane goodness. I uh, and is it everybody in this was wonderful. Even even you know Daddy Ass's role of just doing the run out and attacking Swerve, continuing that storyline on, and then being a score. I mean. Everything was on point. Even the signage was on point because I think my favorite sign of all time had appeared as everybody's making their entrance. On the right-hand side of the ramp, there was a big yellow sign with a hole in the middle that just said scissor hole. And then someone put their hand through it. <laughs> and I'm like, like a glory hole. That's it's so the great. best sign ever. I'm mad that I didn't think of it. <laughs> 
That's so good. Wow. So good. That mm-hmm. that was <clears throat> that was great. Um, Eight man tag. Not surprised. Not, I wasn't expecting this to be such a big highlight. Really, honest to God. It was pro- honestly. It was my match of the night. And that even talks about the main event, which I have lots of thoughts about that main event. Okay, all right, we'll get we'll, we'll get to the main. We'll save the main event. How's that? You want to save that for the end? No, let's talk about that main event now. Let's go right now, then. Okay, because so, it's not the biggest story of, of everything. Well, it's definitely not. I mean, and a lot of the <coughs> night here had a lot. Like there was actually a decent number of matches here. We had what? We had six matches. Okay, yeah. Sometimes they go between five and six. They had six matches, one squash. You know. Mm-hmm. One women's match. Come on, Tony. But I'll talk. I want to talk about that too. But the main event was he's redeeming himself. I. Th- that's what I want to get to. Yeah. But um, two out of three falls. Danielson versus Sammy Guevara. A match we saw two weeks ago. Is that your first beef with this? First beef is I've already seen this. Second okay. beef. My second beef. And everybody's gonna be shocked to hear me say this. I never knew I could hate a lion tamer so much. <laughs> I mean, you got a lion tamer. Yeah, but from a guy who I'm literally giving X Pac heat to. Okay. It hurts. It hurts my soul. And it wasn't even a good lion tamer. He just wanted to stick his tongue out and thought he looked cool. Like, ah, I'm doing a lion tamer. I'm so cool. It's well, like, no, you're not. He did, no, he, did the, he did the walls first, and then he took a second, and then turned it into a lion tamer, <laughs> which lasted all of five seconds, right? I know, but still, like he looked like a buffoon. Buffoonery. Pissed Here's, me off. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't spoiled you for lion tamers, has he? No. Okay. No. Nobody can do no. that. Like. Just make it. Just check. I'm hoping I get. I'm hoping. I'm hoping Chris in the finale of Journey Pro gets me a lion tamer for the win, so that I can ride off into the sunset in Journey Pro, never yelling lion tamer again. That would be the biggest gift, probably to me. <laughs> but That's to you fair. is yeah. I mean, I'm the one who's gonna sit next to you. Anyway. Um, who knows? We may see JDX there. Just saying. Oh, that'd be great. I miss JDX. I really liked this match. I know we've seen it two weeks ago, which is why I wasn't excited about going into it. And it's still a good match. I'm not kidding. Well, it it was, but they did they did the very predictable thing of more or less the game the first two falls right. So then it basically was a single fall match. So it was a rehash of the match we saw two weeks ago. I think if you take that third fall and you take the match from two weeks ago, I actually like this one better. You know, um, it's splitting hairs though. They were, they were, they were, it was excellent, but you got to see some great stuff. I think, I think Danielson looked better in this one just a little bit because the way that they're framing him up here, he's going into this like ultra violent pissed off at everybody phase, right? You know, almost, almost teasing that he's going to break from the uh, Blackpool combat club is what I feel. I don't know if he will, but they're teasing it. Right. You know, I like ultra violent Danielson. That's the best Danielson. So agreed. Uh, agreed. It was a lot of fun. It was a fantastic match, I know, and you know, Danielson did win, and that's how you ended the show. But uh, be interesting with to the see. regal stretch, by the way. He won with the regal stretch, which he, I loved. He, he he took. I thought he might switch that into a cattle mutilation, but no, he just did the regal stretch on top of it. He's so good. He they really is. <clears throat> so a lot of setup was being done for full gear, and this match is kind of one of them because I think they announced on uh, Rampage last week that it's going to be Jericho defending the ROH title in a four-way match against Claudio Castagnoli, Sammy Guevara, and Danielson. And I don't know. I legit think that might be a a straight-up banger, dude. That's got Show Stealer written all over it. 
all over it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would think that match should fuck, but with the star power in there, like you have Jericho, you have Claudio, you have Brian Danielson and Sammy. You know, so you have like three <laughs> really, really, really strong people, and then a fourth they can wrestle. I'm not going to you know, completely. All right, you know, you, you don't him. like Sammy as as a person, but his talent is undeniable. Yeah. So, and I'm still of that ilk. You got to have the you got to have the person you hate, you know, because that that helps fuel things. So whatever. Yeah. So, I do want to just hop back for just a second because. Jamie Hayter versus uh, Sky Blue. Very entertaining match, actually. It's Very good. To see Sky Blue on TV. It was. But this was after this, like, because she had Tony Storm in her, her corner. It was a very fun match. But this was the third segment with women on the show. And they officially announced not one, not two, but yes, ladies and gentlemen. Three women's matches for full year. I, I'm 100 percent sure is the first time they've done that. Is this the t- the tide turning finally? I feel like it. I feel like it is. Um, you know, because they and they and they they had for uh, they didn't have a lot, but they had Jade Cargill real quick. Would do a little thing and announce the match for you know this and that. Uh, but they had a full segment with. Uh, Tony Schiavone in the ring with uh, Soraya and uh, Britt Baker, which I didn't at first. I wasn't really into because it kind of felt like like Britt was going through the same motions as she was when she had uh, the whole Ruby Soho feud. A hey, Ruby, uh, but it wasn't as good. But Soraya came to play, and uh, she's coming to wrestle. And of course, we all know we're excited for Jamie Hader, Tony Storm. We've seen that match a hundred times already, but. It should I be watch time. Her more. It's, it's a fun match. The fun match is it's time for for Jamie to get the belt. I feel like it. I mean, there was actually tonight felt like the first time in a long while that women were actually given a piece of the pie, right? And yes, they had one match and it, it covered a commercial break. Okay, all right. It still was given a decent amount of time though, and it was a good match. So. What do you think? Do you think they're turning the table, or is I, this just concessions uh, having three matches? Because you have Soraya. No, I think I am hoping moving forward we're going to start seeing two women's matches on Dynamite and continue having the one w- women's match on Rampage, like one per hour. It makes it makes a lot of sense. One per hour. Everybody else does it. <laughs> and, and then you could still build storylines on there. You could start mm-hmm. building storylines like you used to on Dark instead of just making it squash matches. Because, like, Dark's kind of gotten boring. My Dark's God. become a developmental thing almost, right? It is, but it's not. Like, they're not doing it. They're just squash matches. They're not even good matches. Yeah, it's just somebody like, who can't I get enjoy on getting t- to see Abaddon. Like, ooh, I can see Abaddon. Like, Versus she's getting so much better. Put her on TV. Nope. No, was well, she going up against local talent number four? You know, so it's like, yeah. I'm not gonna lie; I have not watched Darker or, or Elevation in probably four or five weeks. <laughs> yeah, like I only pick out certain ones. You know, like I saw like a couple matches that intrigued me. Like, okay, yeah, I'll watch that one. Um, but yeah, I I really hope this is that moment. I think Soraya brings eyes, if anything to the women's division not necessarily her ability but at least eyes eyeballs because everybody knows who Paige is mm-hmm, sure. um and then her and Britt are the top two stars of that division right now like if they tried to do Soraya and Thunder Rosa it wouldn't hit like it does with Britt I'm sorry right. like I know that, that that hurts and bruises the ego of Thunder Rosa who's MIA right now um who's who's hurt um <laughs> You know, uh, she might be coming back at, at the end of full gear. Who knows? Like, we don't know anything about her, but it wouldn't hit like this. And the storyline that, that Nyla Rose and Jay Cargo put together is phenomenal. Like, they're starting to get the pieces going. And I feel like I'm hoping, I'm praying they don't fuck this up. 
and don't <laughs> WWE me and get me all happy on a pay per view. And then here comes Wednesday, and we have a squash match with Jay Cargill going against May Saruga. And you know, one, two, three, she wins, retains her belt. You right. know, like I don't want that. I don't want that either. And you know, I think I know the comparison's not necessarily the most fair maybe just because of what's transpired in the past six months but is Soraya to the women's division what CM Punk was to AEW as a whole kind of I d- but less toxic <laughs> that's why I didn't want to that's why I, that's why I was weary about going down this road you know I'm not gonna lie um <clears throat> but you're right you know she is and we said this about certain women as they've come, come in, right? You know, we said this about Ruby, a hey, Ruby. We said this about, you know, Athena and Tony Storm, you know, that people could turn on TV and be like, I recognize that. But they might just be like, I think I recognize her, right? She's the, but Paige, Soraya, definitely people know, right? I mean, she got, she had a fucking movie after her life story, for God's sake, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> With Florence Pugh, which I'm in love with, I think she's hilarious. Oh, Florence Pugh is f- fantastic. And a great actress. She is. She is great Excellent. actress, and I have not seen her do a bad role. Period. Um, but but that's what I'm saying. You know, you know that's the that's the parallel I would make with it. And are you just doing this to get that match to get some eyes on the pay per view, maybe, or just to get Brit something to do in the meantime? I hope that's not it. But the one thing that that Tony's been lacking is the foresight with the women's booking, right? He had this yeah. four year plan built out or whatever, three year plan built out for the whole hangman saga, right? You know? It was masterful. It was great. He didn't he didn't book beyond that though, which is why Hangman won the title and it was like And nothing. And all the women's feuds that have been going on, even the best one they've had, Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker, they get to the crescendo and it's like, what now? So, yeah, I hope you're right. I got to see follow through. I think that two matches is a minimum requirement. I We, we agree wholeheartedly on that. What is he doing with those two matches, though? Is he just going to continue to hash the same people and like tag matches or singles versions and mix it up, you know, do the 50 50 booking bullshit? Or is he going to have Abaddon, have Athena in some sort of feud instead of whatever the hell she's doing, you know? You know, when Ruby's back healthy, hey, Ruby, you know, where's she going to fit in in all this, right? Are you going to develop Sky Blue further? Like, wh- where is this going? I have faith that with William Regal and Madison Rain, Long term, they'll be fine, but I do want to see follow through. Uh, greed. So, you want, you want to talk about the other match of the night? Other match of the night was Ari Davari versus Wardlow. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, that, was, that was ridiculous. I have no no desire to talk about that. <laughs> Wardlow won, and then Powerhouse Hobbs came out to set up a match with those two. Ooh. But Samoa Joe turned on Wardlow, which I didn't even care that they were two or that they were together. Yeah, that okay. Cool. It feels like so many of them, including Samoa Joe, are just waiting for this. And hopefully it'll be done after full gear. We get some sort of announcement that ROH TV deal, right? Because we, mm-hmm. we got to clear bodies off of Dynamite. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, especially with like the ROH boys coming in, and then you have Jeff Jarrett show up again, talking talking nonsensical again. Um, when a friend calls, a friend shows up. Awesome. That's your promo? That promo was terrible. <laughs> especially compared to the Moxley MJF one. Let's just talk about Moxley and MJF's promos, because those were not terrible. Those were masterful. So yeah, why don't you take Moxley? I'll talk. I'll take him, Jeff. Okay. I'll t- so Mox. So Mox's was in person in the ring with William Regal, and it was 
it was very heartfelt for John Moxley, which is kind of out of character of sorts, but not, right? So he talked about his coming up and his wanting to impress William Regal and how first time he went up, he got his shit hand to him by William and, you know, the drive to get there and all this stuff, you know, giving a little like back history to kind of like solidify the the ethos of this feud, especially because it seems, it feels like, and a lot of people have said this, that the, the biggest part of the feud is between MJF and Regal, right? So mm-hmm. Moxie has some, some credence to the, to his side of the backstory, which makes it an even better story between the two, three of them. Right. Um, and then just dug into dug into MJF ever so slightly, you know, in essence, like saying that all, all these tricks and games and bullshit don't work on me. You say you're this. I'm an actual multimillionaire. I'm an actual, you know, yeah, this great. and that. You know, everything you claim to be, I actually am. But so it was a different side of Moxley, but not really, which is why I liked about it. It was a different type of – it wasn't just to come out, I'm going to kick everybody's ass, fuck the world type of thing, right, which is good. Mm-hmm. I like seeing some depth to him. He's got it. He can do it. He absolutely can. I I enjoyed his. I thought, to your point, it added just yet another wrinkle to everything, mm-hmm. you know. And it, I really think that their match is gonna be amazing. I I have a feeling it's not gonna end clean. <laughs> um, I'm less I'm less believing of that as days go by. <laughs> I think. The firm and the Blackpool Combat Club are going to get into it, and the only person left is going to be Lord William Regal, and he's going to turn on Moxley. You think he's going to turn on Mox or the club? Moxley. Just on Moxley. Okay. (laughs) That's a bold statement, Cotton. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense too, though, doesn't it? It makes sense. Yes, I'm not going to say a lot of sense. I'm reserving that. I'm reserving that. I'm reserving that stamp. We'll see in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's a, it. That's just a... feels like like <clears throat> the way that they've been setting it up because like Regal's the key to all of this, right? And everything that he MGF is. has done he is. is because of him. I mean, on paper, it does make a lot of sense. I just, I don't, I can't. Will, you guys let, chime in down below. Do you think, do you think Jamie is uh, dead on on this? Or has he had one too many coconuts on Fantasy Book and Island? Let us know. Yeah, or I've had too many cough drops. (laughs) Um, Stay out of them coding cough drops, man. Come on. (laughs) I am. I am. I mean, learn. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry to those listening to us here. Okay. All right. So MJF's promo was on Barstool. And he just laid in about how he's going to earn it and how it's he always has to stand in line wait his turn but every time he has like something he gets put in somebody's shadow jericho put it in his shadow for a year took everything he had a moment at all out that was taken over by a press conference i'm like oh shit. yeah <laughs> he's like everything has been stolen from him and he wants to be that flag bearer he wants to take mm-hmm. this into a new era he's like you know he compared himself to Bruno San Martino, Dusty Rhodes, Hulk Hogan, uh, The Rock, Stone Cold, John Bret Cena, Hart. Like, Bret Hart. Like he is legit putting himself in the pantheon of the, those generational talents that will take them into the promised land. Mm-hmm. I don't disagree. I think he is on the money. That's how special of a talent this kid is. As long as he learns a better finisher. <laughs> You and the finisher just gets me every time. <laughs> You're not wrong. His, he just needs a little bit more wrestling polish, but he's most he's ninety nine point nine percent the way there. Yes. 
You're saying he needs wrestling polish. Do you not remember one Mr. John Cena? Okay, you're putting... Okay, I'm not putting John Cena up in the same pantheon, you know, as a generational talent. Was he the face of the company? Absolutely. Was he reliable as your top performer? Absolutely. Was he a generational talent? No. Hmm. He was hmm. not. I hated John Cena with every fiber of my being. I I have to give him his flowers. I think he was. He took I, him into the PG era. He was the hmm. bridge to the PG era. Why? Well, I, I I get you. He was he was the uh, the light skinned TV friendly rock, you know, or K or network friendly rock, right? You know, which the rock is pretty network friendly now. Yes, I know, but as far I mean. It could, it, that could have been anybody, you know, that it, he had the skills and the chops to do it. Yes. Was he the only one who could have done that? No. Stone Cold, was there anybody else who could do what Stone Cold did? No. Was there anybody else who could do what, you know, The Rock did? Not to The Rock's level, you know? Uh, Ric Flair, is there anybody that's ever been as good as Ric Flair? Fuck no. And I'll fight anybody that disagrees with what me. What about Hogan? I think Hogan, the only reason he was there is because he's big, tall, and blonde. I think Hogan is – Cena is is basically the newer version of Hogan, and I think that's the same thing. He had a good size. He had the, you know, um, he had, like, ability. He was able to do the things to learn the, to do the stuff, right? That's why – you look at what they did outside of the ring, very, you know. Um, of course, John Cena is, by all counts, a pretty good person, right? You know, he does all those, mm-hmm. you know, you know, the, the Make-A-Wish and all that you – know, I'm not disagreeing with that, but yeah. Hogan, you know, was a very marketable guy, easy to work with, you know, outside of the ring. You know, they sent him to do whatever it was. Yeah, hey, it could be this Rocky movie. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do that. You know, he had his own like horrible, but he has his own Hollywood career. You know, for for a hot man there in the '80s and early '90s. But I think to your point, it could have been somebody else. It could have been. Person B instead of person A, and it probably would have been just about the same because they they made that right, you know. So, but but my think my thought is this, and this is why I agree with what MJF said of them deserving to be on the pantheon of generational talents. Yeah, because here's the thing: Ric Flair and Hogan ran at the same time. Yes, right. And there was a time, not so far in the distant past were four out of five homes knew who Hulk Hogan was and two out of two five, five knew Rick knew Flair, Rick Flair We made mention about the fact that I was able to see Ric Flair on Saturday early afternoons every week because it was on my cable. It was on my, yes, yes. Yeah, Ric Flair is one of the greatest of all time. I will never, ever say. A lot of people say... didn't know him until he showed up in 91 in WWE. Exactly, but people have known who, who Hogan was through the '80s, baby. Like, and, and you're he not was, wrong. So, like, that's a generational talent because he took Hogan took WWE to a whole new world. He really did. Like, he is Aladdin. Like, cannot stress that enough of what he did. And honestly, John Cena did the same thing, man. They went from okay, okay. teenagers to young adults to straight kids you know and they became way more marketable like they're making more money hand over fist under the john cena era than they ever did that's true so that's why i agree with what mg so you would so you would put up their roman reigns as generational talent then as well yes okay i get i understand the requirements i get where you're coming from i'm thinking maybe i'm being too much of a mark on this i'm trying to be more holding that flame to you know the the rick flair model of the of 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 the perfect wrestler as opposed to this plus that so i get what you're saying there i agree i'll put i agree i agree with you i got you you know i agree okay okay but i I just i just want to put put a bow in it lance storm you know the difference between lance storm and john cena is john cena got pushed Lance Storm was an amazing wrestler. Arguably one of the greatest wrestlers, like, talk true for wrestlers out there. Couldn't put fans in the stands. Okay. John Cena, you. 
mediocre, put fans in the fucking stands. And that's what makes you generational talent. I mean, it is show MJF, business. Yeah. So. MJF puts fans in the stands. Baby. I hear you. I hear you. You still want to see him in a better finisher, though. <laughs> oh, 100%. Like, he needs a rock bottom something. That's why I say his wrestling is just, a, just he just needs that one little bit, right? Because he doesn't have that poster move, that, you know, action figure finisher move, right? You know? Yeah. I'm with you, though. I mean, he did. He put himself on the list with a bunch of the Mount Rushmore, you know, the extended Mount Rushmore. And he's not wrong. He didn't even say Undertaker, which I I have qualms with that because Undertaker is he's the only gimmick that worked. I would ever. say Undertaker is the definition. Uh, he's a if you look up in the the wrestling encyclopedia the word gimmick, you see the picture of the Undertaker there. Yeah, you don't. You don't yeah, I mean, to this day, you you hear that single gong on anything and. Anybody's gonna and like I guarantee you at least five out of six out of ten people are gonna sit there and, and immediately think of the Undertaker. At least. Oh. So So you think it's the okay. So you're predicting shenanigans with Regal on mm-hmm. this match. Yeah, because because clearly because clearly MJF is dick riding right now, which Stokely Hathaway, that was excellent. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had to rewind to make sure I heard that correctly. Yeah, he said it twice. I'm like, the first I was like, wait, did he just say dick riding? <laughs> and then it was like, oh, he's dick riding. Oh my god, he said dick riding. Like, you could say that on TV. Apparently. <laughs> But yeah, so Push I feel up. like Combat Club and the firm will take each other out. It'll leave uh, Regal. Regal turns on Mox, your new champion, MJF, and he's a heel. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go out there and, and counter uh, predict. I'm gonna let that digest for a little bit. That's not a I mean that's 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 a very good storyline to have there, you know. So mm-hmm. that's why I should be creative, folks. <laughs> get get this man a job. Um, other than that, there's basically a lot of setup for the rest of Full Gear. So yeah, yeah. Ethan Page got a big win in the World Eliminator Tournament cha- uh, first tournament round tournament champion thing. First round of of this thing that. AEW title a eliminator. Slam or is it the Green finals slam? are going to be at full gear, and the winner of that gets a title shot against whoever the you know world title holder is. So on on a certain dynamite, I forgot what dynamite. Yeah, was. special dynamite, maybe New Year's, uh, New Year's last house. Uh, well, know, to be determined. New Year's soon. finger blasted. <laughs> they have a great chance of winning, as you can tell. Um but no, so the, the, that was going on. They talked. They 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 officially booked a bunch of matches. You know, you had Nyla versus Jade. Uh, you've got Darby and Sting versus Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. I am ready for Jeff Jarrett to be behind the curtain again. I'm. It's already, already. I mean, his he's the last outlaw. He's he's going after the going after the production assistant who's trying to like. No, you trying to count me off? Nobody counts me off. And the whole thing, the whole the whole arena is just like, we don't give a fuck, man. We really could care less yeah, about you. Like literally the the entire crowd is emotionless about him. Yeah. It's like, all right, you're really here to do things in the back. Go do them. We don't need you taking up TV time. Right. He's, he's um, the last outlaw. Half chair key and chalk top. So baby, she's a chip wow. wow. So so you got so you got so you got three women's matches. You got the main title match. You got the tag title match between the claimed and uh, Swerving Our Glory. Um, you've got this title, this tag match of sorts, whatever. The uh, finals of whatever ends up being uh, the uh, a, a AW title eliminator tournament. And uh, there hasn't been officially a TNT announcement. They're probably gonna do a triple threat between Hobbs, Joe, and. Uh, uh, 
Wardlow. Wardlow. Big, t- big win- man slapping meat. <laughs> it's it's the big meaty meat slapping match. Yay! Winner, winner gets both belts, both TV belts. Who knows, right? And then it you've is. got the four-way for the ROH title. So that's a pretty stacked card right there. And knowing Tony Khan, there's probably two or three more matches to be announced. At least. Well, somebody who has not figured into that, but uh, this is what I wanted to end on here. Uh, there was another uh, somewhat cryptic, but not really, uh, promo. So over the past yes. couple of weeks, we've gotten uh, elite promos with them being erased, right? They got Thanos in the first one. And then it's who is obviously Brandon Cutler um, at a <laughs> at a uh, you know video you know editing station there and you know looking over and pictures videos of the elite winning the titles and you know the 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 uh, death triangle winning the titles and what does that all mean? And then they had a promo here that was very similar to the first one but like just loaded up with like full gear imagery as well. Basically announcing that, yes, indeed, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega will be back at full gear. I feel like that was a little bit too nail on the head, right? They're doing the nice little kind of cryptic bits to it, right? Yeah. They could have left it a little bit more cryptic, but like they literally showed them, you know. <laughs> It's like, dude, come on, man. With the Prudential on, Center in the background. It's like, come on, man. But whatever, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I am I am I, I'm interested to see like how they do that. Are they gonna have them just be straight up in a title match, you know, against the uh, Death Triangle? Is so they gonna be or are they gonna come in as a surprise? I like them coming in as a surprise. I said before I'd like to see them come in, you know, at separate times, but who knows? Yeah. I still say they're gonna come back as a trio. And that makes sense too, especially the way they've been framing it. Having them back's gonna be big, especially Kenny. Yeah, because then Kenny could oh, Kenny and MJF feud. Well, what I've some you know internet rumors but what i've what i've read is that kenny's coming back as like straight up face like top face which leads a lot of credence to your whole theory about mjf because he can come back and this is what i'd love to see i think this is the best way to end the show after he does the shenanigans, he gets his belt. He does all that. Then you go blackout. Then you get best bout machine on the on the, and you get Kenny out. That's your next feud, and that will tear the fucking roof off. So, I think, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, any other thoughts? No, man. I thought it was a solid show. Other than Sammy Kavara doing a goddamn lion <laughs> tamer, that was, that was great. Other than Sammy killing the lion tamer for the night. All right. Well, yeah, hopefully you get another lion tamer yourself in person at Journey Pro. Uh, friendly reminder, like I said, uh, December 29th, mark your calendars. Last time Journey Pro is going to be happening. We'd love to see as many of you out there listening in person. If you can, if you're near to the Kansas City or can make it to the Kansas City uh, you know, metropolitan area. Either way, uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel. We got more wrestling. Uh, next week is the Go Home Show. No, it's not. It is. Yeah. Next yeah, week's next week's Go Home. Next week's Go Home. Next week's Go Home for All Out. Uh, for Fall. For, oh, every time there's a fucking AEW pay per view, I say All Out. Yeah, you do. It's okay though. I, I forgive know. you. Uh, we are going to do our, our title tournament. Uh, we didn't get, we, we totally slipped up on it last one. Uh, but we're going to do it, uh, for full gear. So we're going to see if one of us can wrangle the belt away from Megan, the tyrant, who knows, uh, <laughs> as long as it stays in this house, it's all good. We'll see about this. Um, it, it is right before my birthday. I mean, it, it should come to me. It should come to me. Um, yeah, yeah. Like James said, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, we'll have more interviews coming out here soon. Um, that's all I got. So, Jamie, if you got nothing else, take us home, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not down to a spot fest, I got five words for you. I, I, I will guess right one of these days, I swear.
the elite, the, the elite. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace.